files, feather, databases, um, all these different things hold table-like data, right? Rows and columns. Um, and so data streams is a way to get all of those various formats talking to each other in a way that doesn't require any particular library to know about all of the others. So um, it has a data source interface, it has a data sync interface, um, and then uh, the package itself defines the data stream method, which takes a source and sends it to a sync. Um, right now there's a couple packages that implement this, uh, data frames, data tables, um, CSV, uh, SQLite, Feather, and ODBC. Um, those are all up and working. If you check out the package, then that's what it's using under the hood uh, when it actually reads a CSV file, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, the work I've been doing uh, recently has been in simplifying the, the uh, interfaces, so data source and data sync. Um, I've worked with a few people over the last year in terms of um, helping them implement their own package and satisfy the interface. and. Um, kind of realized that there's a few things that don't really need to be there um, and that we could simplify the API a little bit. So this is um, a preview of what the API will be. Um, it's currently open on a pull request for data streams um, because I'm like three branches deep on master on different things, but um, that's coming soon, don't worry. Um, so anyway, the uh, interface for a data source um, looks like this. So you need to define a data schema method, which returns a data schema object. Um, that's just a way to describe your data set. What, how many columns does it have? What are the types of those columns? Um, how many rows does it have? Or do you know how many rows it has? Um, there's an option to say, no, I don't, I don't know how many rows I have as a source. Um, for example, SQLite, when you send a query to SQLite, um, for some reason it can't tell you how many rows are gonna be returned. So. Um, Data sources have that flexibility to be able to say, I don't know how many rows I have, but um, here's the rest of my schema. Um, and that's important in the streaming process because syncs need to be able to prepare and allocate and you know, do other things in terms of preparing to receive data of a certain format. Um, the next one is data is done. So a source needs to be able to say when they're done streaming, um, given a row, given a column. Sometimes that's not necessary. If it's a file, it's just reading to the end of the file. Um, but for other you know, data sources, uh, they need to know, like a data frame, it needs to know what row, what column are we on, so I can tell you that, hey, I'm done you know, streaming data. Um, and then the next two, uh, it are they're not both required. This is a matter of being able to signify uh, or signal what kind of streaming your data source supports. So um, can I stream you know, a single row at a time or can I stream multiple rows all at the same time? Um, you know, a CSV file when I'm streaming, uh, you know, logically we're reading the file you know, row by row and so it can't support giving, me, giving the sync more than one row at a time. Um, as opposed to a feather file or a data frame where everything's stored in memory, I can access an entire column at a time, that kind of thing. Um, and then the last one is the actual streaming uh, provider that the data source implements, it's stream from. So given a row, given a column, given a type, um, give us the value that you have in your table data for that, that piece. Um, data sync is, is somewhat similar. It's kind of the opposite, you know, other side of the coin here. So stream types is basically saying, what kind of streaming types do I support as a sync? Can I accept multiple rows at a time or just one row at a time? Um, the next two are required constructors for your sync. So as a sync, when I do the streaming process, I basically say, here's, here's sync, here's a schema that a data source, um, you know, uh, there's a source that wants to stream to you, here's the schema of that source, prepare yourself to receive data of, of that format. Um, so those are the two required sync uh, constructors. You'll notice the second one takes um, a sync itself as the first argument. So that allows us to do appending um, to existing syncs. Um, so I have an existing sync. I want to append another source to it. Um, and I can do that through this other constructor. And then the final one there is stream two. So um, given a row, given a column, given a value, go store it however you need to in whatever format you are. 
Um, so yeah, this lends itself to really nice um, high-level features that each package can implement um, so that you don't actually like end up using data streams itself a lot. So for example, uh, in the CSV package, we have the csv.read function. And you can just call csv.read on a file. And that's it. That's all you call as a user. What it's really translating into underneath the hood is data.stream. Uh, we're creating a CSV source of that file. And then by default, we're streaming that to a data frame and we're not appending. So that's just an example of kind of what's going on at the next layer under csv.read. Um, but these things compose really well. So you can see that it's really easy for us to say csv.read on a file, but instead of getting it as an in-memory data frame, I actually want to send it into an SQLite table directly, and then I can do other operations on it. And that's as simple as just creating an SQLite sync on an SQLite database, give it a table name, and it's going to send it there, no problem. Um, similar with the others, these are just uh, uh, you know a couple examples. So the third one there, you'll notice that I say append true equals true at the end. So this is maybe an existing Feather file, and I have another ODBC query that I want to append to the result of that file. It'll append it, no problem. Um, and then the last one is uh, another SQLite. This is where I'm actually including a transform function. So these are supported. Um, the transformation actually happens at streaming time. So as each value is streamed from the source to the sink, um, the transformation is applied and um, sent out uh, to the sink. Um, so yeah, you can do kind of simple transformation, scalar, um, column by column. This way, I'm, I'm, I'm giving it the column number, so one, and then giving it a transform function. Uh, so uh, the other work that I've done recently is around uh, improving the performance of data streams. So before, it was kind of naively just um, doing a, a simple kernel loop where we'd say, you know, for each row, for each column, stream from, stream to, uh, and that's it. Um, the problem with that is you run into, uh, you're kind of giving up a lot of type information that we actually have um, at, the streaming at the streaming time. Because um, the data source, it knows what types it's providing. And a sync, it's already prepared to receive certain types. So it's not like we're pulling kind of this any value out and then sending an any value to the stream. So um, with the help of some generative functions, um, we're actually generating uh, more tightly typed inner kernel loops. Um, and it leads to some huge performance wins. Um, so you can see here, uh, I'm comparing CSV read um, on current, like, like I said, this is like 0 0.7 plus three branches right now, um, and a data streams branch and a CSV branch, and you know it's it's all over the place. But that's why this is a roadmap talk, right? Um, but I'm comparing CSV read with um, R's data table package, that's F read, and then pandas uh, read CSV, and then also text parse, um, and we're getting some huge uh, speed ups here. So. Um, if you look at the generated code for this, it's, it's super, super tight. The inner kernel um, is able to inline the actual you know, in, integer parsing function, and it's just screaming fast. So that's uh, kind of a look of things to come. Um, it's really exciting, the kind of performance we can really achieve in Julia. Um, and also thanks to just being able to, we're not even doing anything crazy with, with generated functions. It's really just saying, hey, given the types that we know and how many columns there are and all of this, just generate a nice tightly, you know, a, a, as tight a loop as we can and then do the streaming process. Um, in terms of other planned features, um, I think it'd be cool to be able to do column selecting so you could ignore certain columns during the streaming process. Um, that requires a, a little bit of knowing whether the source has random access or not. Um, and so I'm kind of building that in right now, uh, as well as row filtering. And then I actually have a prototype of data source row iteration. So if you don't necessarily want to stream it to an exact sync, you just want to iterate over the rows, um, that'll be possible. Um, and then uh, this should be really easy to extend to other packages. Um, that's the idea of simplifying the API is that we can then go to these other packages and very quickly um, you know, implement the data source interface, the data sync interface, um, and then they'll be able to talk with all of these other um, you know, formats. So you know, read stat, um, doing an HTML tables package, uh, a latex table package, that kind of stuff. Julia DB, I still need to dig in and maybe go bug Jeff about um, you know, getting into the internals there. But uh, anyway, that's uh, uh, the roadmap for data streams. So uh, a lot of this goodness will be landing in 0 0.7. 
Um, like I said, I'm on like three branches deep on master and there's um, some, some cool optimizations coming in terms of using um, you know, alternative forms of null and that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm going to be talking again Friday more about the nulls stuff specifically. But um, yeah, that's data streams. Thanks. Yeah, Curtis? Uh, that was like 0 0.7 plus like three branches. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was working on it this morning. So. Yeah, question. Yeah, definitely. So that's, that's really what the data streams framework is built for, is no matter what format you are, as long as you can uh, you know, pr implement those interfaces, it should be able to work just fine. So, for example, the ODBC package, I mean, a lot of the times you're interfacing with a database on some Amazon cluster somewhere and it's, you know, three billion rows and, okay, I need to stream that into another format that's also out of memory or in memory or whatever. Um, so that's the advantage of, of kind of decoupling the sources and the sinks and being able to provide that streaming capability. So, sorry, I don't quite follow. Um, I mean, that it kind of depends on your application, right? So if it doesn't fit in memory, it doesn't fit in memory, right? So you can stream that into an SQLite database and then do operations there or stream it into an ODBC database somewhere and be able to interact there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's not reading the entire file into memory and then sending it somewhere. It's row by row, value by value, it's going to spit it out. So yeah, you can handle all that. Okay. Cool. So I might have to uh, shorten okay. the video again to take